Hey guys, Kethan again. Today we are solving another problem for the beginner level of code chef in C++. And today's problem is cutting recipes. The problem code is RECIPE -E recipe. Let's jump into the problem statement. The chef has a recipe he wishes to use for his guests. But the recipe will make far more food than he can serve to the guests. The chef therefore would like to make a reduced version of the recipe which has the same ratios of ingredients but makes less food. The chef, however, does not like fractions. The original recipe set contains only whole numbers of ingredients and the chef wants the reduced recipe to only contain whole, num whole numbers of ingredients as well. Help the chef determine how much uh, of e each ingredient to use in order to make as little food as possible. Okay, this might be a little uh, confusing uh, right away. So let me use uh, inputs given to explain the problem. Okay. So this is the first input. This is just a test case, and this is the number of uh, recipes that are in the list, right? In the in the, here we have two, so we have two recipes, four and four, two two items, four and four. Now we have three, so we have two, three and four. Here we have four. Uh, you get the, you get the uh, idea, right? Now in this example, in this test case, we have two items, and we have to mix these uh, bo mix both the items at the ratio of 4 is to 4 right now we want to reduce the amount of food to as minimum as possible right so can we do that like can we reduce this here yes we can because 4 is to 4 can be reduced down to 1 is to 1 right it, they are both multiples of 4 right and observe that I'll be saying multiples in every uh, example so that is a pattern Using that back pattern, we can solve it, right? We have to identify that. Now let's go to the second example. Here we have two, three, and four, right? Now, do we have a common multiple that can divide all of this? Because if it can divide all of this, then we can essentially reduce the amount of food that we are using, like the amount of quantities of each item that we are using. Now, if we reduce, like if we divide each number by two, this will be a fraction 3 by 2 is 1.5 right and chef does not want fractions in the recipe so we can't do that can we use any other number can we use 4 no again 3 will be a problem uh, and also 2 will be a problem because it will be 0.5 right if we use 3 4 will be a problem and 3 will be a problem if we use 2 well 3 will be a problem still so the only number we can use is 1 and if we use 1 it will still be the same like the uh, quantities does not change because dividing any number by one, well, it will give the same number, right? So we see that the only multi, the only number that we can use to divide these uh, amounts is one, right? And here, if you see, we can divide this with three. Three. Uh, so the ratio can be reduced down to one, five, three, and two. Right, three ones are three, three fives are fifteen, three threes are nine, three twos are six. Right, so we can so we can reduce this ratio down. Right, so that these are exactly the answers that we have to output. Right, so I, I hope you have identified the pattern that we are finding the uh, maximum number that we can use to divide all of these numbers. Right, which is essential if you think about it. We just have to find the GCD of all these numbers combined. GCD stands for greatest. GCD stands for stands for greatest common divider, and that's exactly what we want here, right? We have we are just finding out the smallest possible ratio to serve the minimum food without causing fractions, right? Now that we understood that, right? That's the main logic that we are going to use to solve this problem. Right, uh, and using that logic, the only thing we need to do right now is find the GCD of all these numbers. Right, so let me show you uh, this algorithm called Euclidean algorithm, which is the best uh, algorithm that we can use to find the GCD of two numbers. Right, uh, well, I'm saying GCD of two numbers because we can't find GCD of all the numbers at, at a single go. We have to use a function called GCD, which will uh, employ the Euclidean algorithm, and that GCD function will take 
uh, in this case it will take both these numbers and it will find the GCD in this case it will it will take these two numbers and find the GCD which will which will come out as 1 and again we have to take that 1 and use this number right so we'll pass 1 and 4 as uh, parameters for the GCD, GCD function then we'll get another GCD right that will be 1 so that's the final GCD right so we have to do it in pairs pairs of 2 okay so that's the concept now let's get into code and let me show you the Euclidean algorithm and I'll be including a great article by Khan Academy for the Euclidean algorithm you can find it in the description so we have the test case code here and in each test case we have first we have an integer let's say n which will be the number of uh, you know items in the recipe and then we will also have uh, an array right but let we have to take the n first so that we can uh, fix the size of the array right so we use integer a array of size n we declare the array and then we use a for loop 0 i less than n and i plus plus and now we take in each uh, each uh, you know item the quantity of each item and we put it into that right okay now we have all of the items now what do we need to do what we need to do is pass each uh, pass pairs uh, of numbers so that we can find the G, uh, gcd of all the numbers right so before doing that uh, we need to write the gcd function let's write it uh, what will it return it will return an integer uh, so let's call it gcd and it will take two parameters let's call them a and b right this function will take two parameters a and b and it will output the gcd of uh, a and b right so the euclidean algorithm well let me go let me go to the khan academy euclidean Argo algorithms uh, article so that you can you can understand it better okay so there are basically four steps uh, in this algorithm like four parts in this algorithm first will be if a is 0 then we just output b as a gcd okay and if b is 0 we output a as gcd right now these are simple these are just checks that we perform in every uh, in every iterative call or rather recursive call and this is a recursive algorithm and otherwise we uh, if those both cases fail then we come to this step what we do is we we have to find the quotient okay we have to convert a and b into this format as a equal to b into q plus r and then we call the gcd function again with b and b and r okay this is there's a lot of mathematical you know, explanation for this so you can find it here if you are able to understand it you can just look it there this is really good uh, this is a really good article but i'll just take this example uh, well you guys can go through this example right 270 and 192 we can convert it into this format by using you know the division we can just divide the greater number and then we'll get this multiple right now we just find uh, 78 by 270 minus 192 into 1 right that will give us 78 or we could just use 270 percentile 192 it will also give us 78 right so we just have to uh, send 192 and the remainder which is 78 as uh, newer GCD parameters. So that's the concept, that's the algorithm we'll be using. It is very fast compared to any other algorithm. It's like the best algorithm. So, so we'll be using that, right? So first of all, we need to check if A is equal to zero. If that is the case, 
then we'll just return b right else if b is equal to 0 return yeah well we don't even need else if we can just use else if because we are returning so this won't get executed if this is happening right now both of these don't happen then we have to see which is greater if a is greater than b we use well we return gcd of b comma a is greater than right? a, a is greater right so we use a percent help okay else we return gcd of a and b percent a okay because this is a greater number i'm sorry uh, yeah because b is the greater number that's why dividing b with a okay now if yeah so we just do that and we also have one more step or is there no right we, we don't have any steps like th these are the termination conditions and if the if we are not at the termination condition then one of these will be executed okay all right so this will take care of the gcd uh, uh, this this is basically the gcd algorithm euclidean gcd algo okay right so now now that we have the gcd function ready let's put all the values into the gcd function one by one okay now we'll need a loop again just to access the uh, elements in the array one by one first we need to pass uh, okay let's let's declare another variable called answer and the answer is uninitialized at first here answer is equal to gcd of a of 0 and then a of 1 okay and yeah there be, this could be a problem if there are uh, there aren't at least at le uh, two numbers in the test cases right if this is just one number then we should just output that but let's see if that is actually a problem in submitting okay Th that won't be a problem because it is given here that two is the minimum uh, number okay okay so that that shouldn't be a problem we can find this answer at first now in every iteration okay we have to set the i to 2 because we have we just found out the gcd of first element and second element so we'll be starting from the third element okay here we just need to pass answer is equal to gcd of uh, answer and a of i right we talked about this we first find the gcd of first two elements and then uh, uh, sorry first two elements and then after that we keep passing the current gcd along with the next number so that uh, we'll keep updating the gcd until we exhaust the list and at the end we'll get the actual answer right now this is not like the uh, this is not the answer like we shouldn't output just answer as the output because what they are actually asking is the list right so now what do we do is what we do is we'll loop again for int i equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus right here we see out a of i and divided by answer right because this is a, a common divider common divisor so we use that answer answer is a common divide greatest common divider right so we use that to output the correct answer okay so 
after that we'll just use a space and that's it and after all of this we need to output an end line this is for test case formatting okay yeah let's check this this should work let's run it so 1 1 2 3 4 and 1 5 3 2 right so it's working now okay let's submit this first yeah if we want to talk about the time time complexity here this is order of n and this is we got the correct answer and the time is also good now we got the time complexity as this is order of n this loop and this loop is also order of n and this loop is also order of n right but here we are uh, we are calling the gcd gcd function right and the gcd function uh, we have to find out the uh, you know the actual time complexity of the gcd function also so that we can multiply that along with n to get the actual time complexity of this loop every other loop uh, these two loops will be just order of n but this loop will have a slightly higher uh, what do you say time complexity so what will be the actual uh, time complexity of the gcd uh, function well we are dividing it every time until we get to zero right okay here is a you know uh, an answer for finding the time complexity of euclid's algorithm and actually this is the first time that i'm using the euclid's algorithm so i'm using this references for now so you guys can, you guys can also check this out i'll also put the link in the description for this okay so this is the answer that one of the community members put in stack overflow you guys can check this out this is pretty detailed right okay so with that the final uh, time complexity will be order of uh, log of a plus b okay that will be the time complexity of euclid's algorithm order of log of a plus b okay this is uh, this is dependent on a and b so it is like this and so with this uh, the total time complexity will come out to around n into log of a plus b okay because of this loop in this loop we are calling gcd again and again right so because of that it will come out the order of log of a plus b and n into log of a plus b right and space complexity is order of n because we are using just one array right and although we will be we will also be using a recursive stack so we'll be using stack for this so it'll also take a little bit of space okay uh, yeah so thank you for watching uh, if you have any more doubts you can refer to these articles right i hope i have been useful and if you have any more doubts maybe you can just google them in uh, in the topics of euclid's algorithm and the time complexity of it in other cases i can help you out if you have anything uh, you know doubts about this code this code Right, share share with your friends, guys, so that they can also uh, be benefited from this content. And hit a like button if you liked it, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in a bit.